Hey everyone, it's Jim. How's it going today? Uh, welcome to my Aurora HDR 2018 tutorial series. This is a series of videos I'm going to do, sort of a cluster if you will, all grouped together that are designed to help you go from beginner to advanced user of Aurora HDR 2018. I'm probably going to do three videos in this series and starting with this video, which is part one, is going to be a general walkthrough of the new product, how to edit an image, how to use presets, some of the basics of filters and some of the basic tools. We'll get into advanced uh, edits and that sort of thing in the second and third videos. So I'm going to go ahead and start by dragging this series of brackets over to Aurora and getting started. Now here we go. Um, I've got an option here for ghost reduction and chromatic aberration and alignment. So I'm going to choose all three and I'm going to click create HDR. Now I'm using the standalone version. You can use this as a plugin to Lightroom or Apple Photos or other host programs. But this is the standalone version just in case you were curious about that. So here we go. Uh, the first thing I think you'll notice is that the, the HDR is very natural, very realistic, very subtle. I think the photos actually look incredible. And so um, I highly recommend checking this out. If you didn't get it during the pre-order and haven't bought it yet, you can check the link that I'll leave down in the comments below. Go download a free trial from the MacFun website. Give it a test drive. I think you'll love it. Um, a couple of uh, tips and tricks for you about shooting HDR photos. I recommend using a tripod so that all your images are crisp and they line up easily. I recommend a cable release for the same reason that you don't shake the camera when taking the photos. And um, I recommend experimenting with both the number of brackets and the order, not the order, but the, um, the exposure compensation of the different brackets. Uh, so what I mean by that is I generally take three exposures per bracket. And when I say the exposure compensation, a lot of people will take three and they'll take a negative two, which is a dark photo, a zero exposure, uh, which is kind of the middle, and then a plus two, which is a bright, and they'll merge those together. I generally aim more to the left or what they call exposed to the left. I take darker photos generally. I think this one is a negative four, negative two, and zero. And just in my experience, I've found that the really bright plus two exposure isn't really very helpful most of the time. And so I don't really ever use it. So I got away from taking it and I generally take darker photos because I think it's easier to brighten them than it is to have a, a blown out photo that's kind of useless. Just my two cents, I recommend experimenting and see what you come up with. Okay, so here's Aurora, very natural HDR. You've got tools across the top that include zooming in and out, a comparison window, a history panel, a crop tool. This is where you get presets, this is where you get your filters, and when you're finished, you click this button in the upper right to share your image on popular social websites or just to uh, export it and save it to your desktop or hard drive, whatever it may be. I'm gonna start with the presets. That's right here. Now there's a number of presets built in. You can see that I've come into the realistic pre preset, uh, realistic HDR preset category. And if you want to check out the categories, you just click on categories and it opens up. You can see there's some well-known photographers that have their own preset packs included. You can also build your own. Uh, they will show up in custom, and I've got some here that I've been working on that I'll be sharing later. I'm going to stay in the realistic HDR category, and I'm going to click Vivid Memories and apply that. And there you go. With one click, all these edits that comprise the preset are applied to the photo, and theoretically, you're done. You can literally do one-click edits, and that's one of the beautiful things. If you want to reduce the intensity, you can just drag that slider down like that, or drag it back up if you want to. Uh, apply the intensity at a higher rate. So I'm going to leave it at 100. By the way, if you want to favorite some of these presets, you can click that star button and it'll add it to your favorites folder, which you will find uh, right there. So that's that. Now, let's say you're finished and you say, God, that looks really good. I think I'm done, but well, maybe I'm not done. Maybe I want to make a minor adjustment. Can I do that to a preset? Absolutely. And all that involves is you get over here to the filter menu. Once you open that, this side panel will come out and you'll see that three filters are in orange whereas the rest are in white. The ones that are in orange have been used in the preset. So if you click on it, you can see that a minor adjustment has been made to some of the sliders within that filter and that's what the preset is. It's a collection of adjustments all stuck together and they're preset, hence the name preset, right? So you can see that. However, just because you've applied the preset doesn't mean you're stuck with that look. You can come in here and say, well, maybe I want to adjust the um, contrast a little bit. I want to add a little bit more of that. Maybe I want to go into color 
and maybe it's a little too saturated, so maybe I want to take that down, and you can do that. Maybe you want to come into Image Radiance and add a new filter uh, to the photo, and so you can come in here and say, I'm going to apply a little Image Radiance to give it that kind of moody, romantic look. Maybe I want to make those adjustments. Maybe you want to add top and bottom tuning and go down here into the bottom and say, I want to lift the exposure in the foreground a little bit like that. And there you go. All of a sudden, you took the preset as a starting point, which is what I really recommend doing a lot of the time, um, and then made adjustments to it to really customize it to your photo and to get the look that you're going for. Now I can click on the before and after. You can see a massive difference between what we started with which, by the way, the before photo is the middle exposure from the bracket set. And, of course, the after is the one with the preset as well as the additional filters that we added to it. So that's how that works. Now you can also access the history panel, and you can see what you've done to this photo going all the way back to the original. There's the original, and you can go back to where you are right now. And you can also stop anywhere in between if you're curious. This is a good time to look at the crop tool. If for some reason you decide you want to crop the photo, you can just click on the crop icon, and there's a free crop, and you can also stick with common aspect ratios. This was shot in three to two, so it'll stay in that if I choose that. And I could say something like that, you know, maybe move this in if I don't like some aspects of the photo. You can also reposition the photo within that, and then say I'm done, and click crop. Alternatively, you can flip the photo around horizontally horizontally, as well as vertically, and of course you can rotate it if you're so inclined. Now I'm going to hit reset because I don't need to crop this one, and I'll hit cancel, but that's how the crop tool works. Now that's a quick view of the basics. Now in the next video we'll go into deeper detail on all of these filters and how to use them, but there's one last thing I want to share with you, and that is save filters preset at the bottom. If you click on that, you can come up and say, you know, new preset number one, right? And create new preset. And you've just now taken a base preset, added stuff to it, customized it, and created your own preset. So if you want to close this, you can go back into the preset menu. You can go into custom presets, and you'll see new preset number one is right there, right? So that's how that works. You can create your own looks and you can start by using other presets and building upon them. I highly recommend using presets to get familiar with the filters. Add a preset and then open the filters panel, look at the different filters, see what's included in the preset, and then start making adjustments, saving your own presets, trying them on different photos, and experimenting with different looks. It's a great way to learn the filters and become really comfortable with the product. Now, Next video, as I said, we'll go into deeper detail on these filters. We'll also cover some of these tools up here and continue to dive deeper into Aurora. So that's video number one in my Aurora HDR 2018 tutorial series. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you find this helpful, uh, give me a like. Give me a comment. If you can share it, that'd be great. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll keep posting this kind of content every week and provide uh, free training on these products because I think they're wonderful. I love to use them. I use them on my photos all the time, and that's why I'm passionate about doing it. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time, friends. Adios.